Hello and welcome to another Draw Along Workshop with the Library of Nature. Today we're going to be drawing the Garden Tiger Moth, a brightly coloured moth that used to be seen a lot in the UK but whose numbers have dropped dramatically. So to begin, let's learn a little bit about them. Garden Tiger Moths are a large moth with a white and brown pattern on their top wings. We call these the forewings. The wings beneath these, their hind wings, are bright orange with big black spots on them. It's thought that they will display these to warn predators that they're not safe to eat and that they also release a bad smelling and tasting fluid from behind their head. They have very fuzzy black and ginger caterpillars which are often known as woolly bears and they can also cause irritation when touched so you shouldn't pick them up if you are lucky enough to find one. How can we help them? It's estimated that the garden tiger moth numbers might have dropped as much as 90% over the last 40 years. We think this is because of the changing weather and because there are less wild spaces which contain their caterpillar food plants. These include stinging nettles, dock and burdock plants. To help garden tiger moths, we can leave wild spaces in our parks and gardens and then these plants will grow so their caterpillars will have food to eat. Now let's draw our own garden tiger moth. You can pause the video if you need to gather your materials together. You will need plain paper, a pencil, a rubber, a ruler and some colouring materials. These could be colouring pencils, crayons or felt tip pens. To begin we're going to lay the paper out so it's landscape. That means that the longest sides are at the top and the bottom rather than at the sides. Now we need to carefully fold the paper in half trying to get the corners to match up if we can. When we open this up, it will make a center line that we can use to help us draw a picture that looks the same on one side as it does on the other. The word that we use for this is symmetrical. As we draw our moth, we're going to draw each stage on one side and the other, which will help us to keep them looking the same. If it's difficult to see your folded line, you might want to use a ruler and very gently draw a line down the middle. I'm going to use a pencil for my drawing. This is called an HB pencil, which is the common type of pencil you'll find at school or in a stationary art set. You can get all sorts of different pencils that make different marks, but the HB is great for what we're doing today. And if you don't have one, any other pencil or dark colored pencil is just fine. Our first pencil lines are going to be sketch lines. This means we're going to make a very light mark to begin with so we can work out where we want everything to go. And then nearer the end of our drawing, we'll draw over these lines, pressing a bit harder so the lines are clearer. So to begin today, let's just practice making some very soft, gentle lines on the back of our paper. One way to do this when you're drawing a long line is to split this into lots of smaller lines like this. Now we're ready to start drawing our moth. To begin, let's draw the head of our moth. To do this, we need to draw a big upside down U shape. Next, we draw two little points like V shapes and we join them up with a larger V. Now for the top or four wings. These are roughly a triangular shape, so you could very lightly sketch in two simpler shapes to help you like this. Then go over the top, adding more curves instead of sharp corners and curving your lines as they meet the head. Underneath these, we draw the bottom wings, which are called the hind wings. We'll start where those little V shapes meet the bigger one at the bottom of the head. And again, you might want to draw in some simpler shapes to help you. The hind wing is a little bit longer than the forewing. Now at the very bottom of our wings, we can draw a little V shape again to form the bottom of the moth's body. The next stage is that we're going to draw in the antennae. These begin at the top of the head and curve upwards. 
So our moth has something to sit on, let's draw in some legs. Moths actually have six legs, they have three on each side, but we can only see four in this drawing. There are two near the head and there are two picking out from beneath the four wings. Now along the bottom of each wing we're going to draw a thin line. This marks where the feathery edge of the wing will be, which is called the fringe. The next step is to draw the white and brown pattern on the four wings. This can look complicated at first, so we're going to sketch in the shapes and then go over them and add detail later. I've shown these in blue so you can see the basic shapes, but your lines should be drawn very lightly with your own drawing pencil. First we're going to draw a large semicircle in the middle of the wing. It looks more pointed at the end, a little bit like an egg shape. Inside this we draw a smaller version of this shape. And underneath these, we draw another shape which is very similar. It's medium size compared to the large shape and the small shape. Now we draw another oval on the other side of the wings. And this long thin shape above them. Along the bottom of the wings we add a shape that looks like two mountains with a valley in between. And three small ovals near the top of the wing, so big, medium and small. Finally, we add half an oval to the inside of each wing. We can now go over these shapes with bumps and wriggly lines to make them more like the real pattern on the garden tiger moth wings. Brilliant, well done. Now we need to add the pattern to the hind wings in a similar way. Luckily, these are a bit simpler. So making our rough, simple shapes again, we draw one large oval on the wing edge next to the moss body. Then a circle in the middle of the wing. And one more on the wing edge. We now add one long U shape at the top. And a smaller U shape underneath. Now as we did for the four wings, let's go over these shapes with our pencil, adding more detail and bumpy lines to look like the pattern on the real moth wings. To finish our drawing, let's add some more details to show the furriness of the head and body of the moth. You can also add some lines to look like stripes on the body. And now we can colour our garden tiger moth in. This will take some time, so you might want to pause the video here while you do your colouring in. It's a good idea to start with the darker shapes first, so black on the pattern on the hind wings and dark brown for the legs. I used a slightly lighter brown for the wing patterns and the head and a bright orange colour for the abdomen, thorax and hind wings with a yellow line on the fringe of the wing the antennae are cream, and so is the rest of the forewing, with a lighter line along the fringe at the bottom. I really hope you enjoyed this draw along session. As always, please feel free to send your finished artwork to us and let us know what animals you would like to learn to draw next. Well done, I'm sure you did a great job drawing your garden tiger moth. You can find more Library of Nature activities at www.thelibraryofnature.com